Bird Brain, and today we are talking about rigging, but also cutout animation. So what we're gonna actually talk about is node caching. Because as years go and as technology evolves, rigs are getting more and more heavy, and this is normal. I mean, to a certain extent. I do think that some rigs are overcomplicated for what they should be, and I do think that some people need to chill in their rigging and stop having so many little weird contraptions. You know, an envelope deformer and a peg works great for limbs. Like you don't need to do some crazy shenanigan system and whatever, okay? That's just my opinion. So even if you have a rig that is as optimized as can be, like these two boys are really heavy rigs. Uh, not because I went over crazy with the features and stuff, just because they are envelope based rig, which means that I want to be able to tween every keyframe. So that means that most, if not all of the pieces have envelope deformer and they're okay on their own. Like if I activate the deformer one by one, it's not intimidating at all. It's just that you can control the drawings with the deformers. However, if I select both of my rig and I show you how many deformers they have your computer is gonna scream and it's not because it's a bad rig it's just that it's 2021 and 2d cutout animation has evolved and it's getting heavier just like 3d animation model are not the same as what they were like 10 years ago right so Toon boom is not silly they're trying to find ways to make that transition bearable right like the rigs getting heavier and heavier is kind of inevitable so instead of lowering the quality of the rigs to make it suit your computer sometimes you will need to kind of have some ways to make your rig easier to handle for your computer right and one of the ways that Toon boom found to help with that is called node caching. So just to maybe simplify it, node caching is basically instead of harmony reading the hundred of nodes inside your rig at all time and all the cutters and the whatever to play back your animation, what it's going to do is going to kind of replace your rig with an image instead. All right, so that's what I'm going to do here with Woo. I'm going to take a composite, put it here, and then inside the properties of the composite, I will set it to pass through if I want to maintain Z axis. Sometimes if you have ZDEF, like if they're hugging each other, you have to maintain your ZDEF. But then I'm going to press on cached and what that's going to do is give a little hat to my composite. That's kind of cute. See hat? No hat? Hat? No hat. So why do we need a hat? And when you put a hat on your composite, if I go here and I click elsewhere, you're going to see that my rig is going to turn weird. Yeah, it turns all low quality and stuff, which is weird because Harmony is supposed to be vector. It's supposed to be always amazing when you zoom in. So what is the software kind of doing? And don't quote me because it's probably not exactly it, but it's kind of replacing your rig by a sequence of image that is cached in the memory of your computer or, or your scene or something. Some dark magic like that that I don't quite get. That's mostly it. So instead of reading your whole rig, it's kind of reading just the images, which is really, really lighter. Usually if I have two or three of these rigs in my scene, my computer is starting to have a little problem navigating the scene because they're heavy. But when the node caching is on, it's a lot smoother. All right, so I'm also gonna give a cache to a link on the other side. Just copy paste it because I'm lazy. And you see, since I copy pasted it, it also has a hat. So cool, my two composites have a hat. And now if I click elsewhere, I will have this thing going on. All right, so it's basically a low res image of your rigs. Now to control this, oh, that's funny, he's missing a few teeth. Anyway, so how to control this? You have two options. You have either in your camera view down to the left, you have a little lightning bolt. This will choose what is the quality of the cache that you're using. Of course, 64 per 64 will be very ugly, but much quicker. 1024 per 1024 will be prettier, but kind of too heavy. So like, I don't see the point. So uh, I typically leave it to like 256 and it looks great. So this will give you more chances of playing your animation in real time. I can't guarantee anything because I don't know what your rig is and what your situation is, what your computer is. But all I know is that generally it's quicker. Um, one thing to note, however, is that it is important that your node cache is at the bottom of your rig. Because I've dealt with some people that thought that they needed to cache all the pieces one by one. So, so all the pieces were cached one by one, which is not how it works. Like the goal of the tool, if I show you here with the drawing. So the goal of the tool is to take many pieces and cache them together as one drawing. Right? So then it's lighter. But if you take many drawings and you all give them their own cache, uh, this is not helping. Like, this is just going to be evil and break your scene. So don't cache everything. Like, in a scene, if you want it to work, from what I remember, I think you need at most five or six. And then it's good. If you have more, it's just not going to work because it's going to be as heavy as just using your regular stuff. So usually if you have, like, six or five or six characters in your scene, you can give them all their own node cache and you're going to be fine playing back your animation. So another way to control your node caching is to go into the toolbar. You can just go here, right click and find node caching. There's a couple of icons you can use there. I will link the documentation for you to check it out because it's really useful. It explains a lot of little issues that can happen. But just to show you quickly, you have four buttons. You have toggles, node cache uh, to turn it on and off. You have the show cache preview. Uh, this will kind of refresh your node cache. If you see that it's not refreshing, 
uh, you might trust you might just need to force it by clicking there it's going to refresh your cache um, this button is if you want to always have your playback play with a cache preview uh, it just depends on what you want and this one i don't really i don't usually touch it um, you can just read the description if you want to know what it does but it's basically do you want it to do you want the selection you make in your node view to affect uh, the one in the camera view Honestly, just leave it on. It's fine. And that's it. So now just before I end the video, I'm just going to show you uh, what are the downsides of the uh, node caching. It, well, it's not really a downside. It's just something to be careful about. Since it replaces your rig with one flat image, it means that if you have interaction going on in your rig, here I'm going to show you. I will remove these composites. And I'm going to show you this next frame where they're kind of interacting. So one leg in front, uh, the arm is sometimes in front and behind. So there's a lot of Z-depth going on in there. If I give them node caching, uh, now it's fine. But if I click elsewhere, you see, it's always going to be one or the other in front of the other. Like, there's no more Z-depth layering. But as I said, it's only for OpenGL view. If I go and render, there's still going to be my Z-depth going on. It's really just for OpenGL that it doesn't work because of the node caching. All right, and I strongly encourage you to go read the documentation on the subject because they explain a lot of different things that can happen, but it's more like case by case, and I don't have any more time for it today. So I'm going to link that in the description, and you can just check it out. And with that, have a wonderful day. See you.